years, even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webwear, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices, and I'm actually on most of the really early on tutorials, okay? In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. In this next video, I am going to walk you through the process of setting up a new client and what that looks like and everything that kind of pops up along the way when you're doing that so you can take note on the information that you might need ahead of time okay and all I did was from the home screen I selected projects and clients you can also set it up from here saying new okay but I'm gonna go through and set it up here then uh, click this blue button for the new client okay and in this case, I am going to um, explain what I like to use as their address ID, okay? A lot of times people want to put the full name or the full company, um, that, that, that can and doesn't always have to be the case. Um, I suggest uh, talking with your team and coming up with a naming convention that works for you. If you didn't have one or didn't don't have a team to discuss this with, what I usually like to go for would be um, last name. Now, for clients that have common last names, that might not be as easy, but um, there are certain naming conventions that we can follow. Now, when selecting the way that you're going to use this address ID, um, which I also have seen people use the street name when trying to... Uh, kind of prevent many things with client names or company info sometimes people use the street okay i've seen it done a number of different ways i personally like um the last name in in cases that we have um more than uh, a single client with the same last name then you can um signify by initial or our street okay um, be mindful not to use any um, punctuation in the address ID. I do recommend going in and filling out as much information as possible. Um, the more information that you fill out in these upcoming screens, the more information is available for reports and uh, looking things up. Okay. The, system is only as good as the information you provide regardless of the software or system okay so in this case i am going to go ahead and set up my client and i will use client jones Whoops. i like to have the address ids in caps i think it it's a nice look um you have the option to select project instead of client now what i'm gonna i'm gonna teach I want you to really be mindful. I do not recommend using anything besides client or when setting up other uh, types of, of address IDs. I would only use client or vendor, and I'll explain why, okay? I only use those two in the beginning, even if there are a lot of uh, selections that you can pick. And I will get into why when we, when we cross that bridge. So for the sake of continuing on this, I will go ahead and um, enter, oops, um, my pretend client, okay? And um, her address, if you don't have one, I definitely recommend uh, you pull one up because this is going to determine the tax location and whether or not you need to set one up. So if you just, 
skipped over it in the beginning, it's still going to ask you for a tax location. Okay, so I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, make make a, a address up. Okay, I'm just going to pick one of these. Okay, Bermuda Road. Okay, and I'm going to you would put the phone number. I'm going to just put one here. Um, um, okay, oops. Alrighty. So um, again, the more information that you have, um, the better things can pull up on other areas of the software. So I'm going to do um, tjones at um, gmail.com. If this was a vendor or other uh, type of payee or other uh, setup, you can add a website. These notes are private, so if I wanted to um, indicate something, and it again, it's internal, so I would like to, um, if I wanted somebody to know this, I would um, definitely want to include um, uh, Marie's uh, friend, okay? So that way, if, if it matters to anybody that's around, um, you know, we just have that. You can add a timestamp as well, okay? So uh, before I go ahead and say, well, I'm going to go ahead and save it now, but before I get out of this area, I really want to make sure that uh, as you set things up, that you do make the time to kind of look at all the different uh, fields that are available because like I said, this information is how you're going to call things up in other areas and the more information that we have, the better. Okay, it is going to keep the Las Vegas tax location. If I wasn't sure, I would have to look up that information. Okay, so you want to be mindful of that anytime that you set somebody up. Okay, vendor or, or um, well, really not vendor. It, it's really for the clients, okay, because uh, we'll get into the sales tax and the reasons why as we go along. So remember how I told you earlier that I always set up a new room list for each client? Well, I'm, I'm about to do that here, and I'm going to just add a new room list. So in this case, I'm going to say Jones. Okay, it's going to be my Jones room list um, related client. I'm going to just leave it as Jones, okay? And we're going to just leave everything as is. I like all the markups. I like where everything's at. So um, we're going to just save, and I'm going to just show you what is in these other fields. If you wanted to add contacts, we could do that. Otherwise, um, I mean, it's still the information that's found there. Um, I'm not gonna do that here, okay? And then any payments, um, you can kind of uh, configure that here. I'm not gonna get into that just yet. And any history on this would be here, okay? You can clearly see how that looks. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you before we get off this screen is in through here. Okay, this area right here, I don't know if you can see my, my, my mouse, but this is very important because this is kind of the, the client deposit information area. Okay, you can see that I haven't collected any money. I haven't um, applied any money as well. Okay. Now, after you set up a new client, I do usually review their contract for uh, rates. These rates are basic time billing rates for any of your staff or yourself as the interior designer. Okay, you would set those up in through here. I'm not going to do that. I am going to save that for an advanced accounting tutorial. This is something that doesn't usually follow um, the new client setup. The only time that I am going to go in here is if we really did have those rates outlined. I'm not going to do that just yet. Okay, so assuming that we had it, I would just go in here and I would set them up and it is according to client. So let me just, I can show you what that looks like. So it's basically uh, your chance to set up whatever uh, those rates are gonna be, okay? You may have different rates for different things, sourcing and all that, okay? Um, we can dive into that in another video, but I did wanna point that out Okay, so what typically happens after you've set up the new client, you've set up the uh, time rates that you would want to use for time billing, I always uh, collect a retainer, okay, and 
I'm going to go ahead and walk you through that posting. But what I want to make sure that uh, you know is I recommend collecting a retainer, and I'm going to explain why. Um, collecting a retainer basically is your way to ensure that we're not out the money or the time spent in the initial part of the the new client process, right? That we don't just go there and, you know, meet with them and everything seems great and, it, you know, seems like a real good go. We're going to continue. You don't collect the retainer and then you spend a bunch of time trying to plan. And trust me when I tell you, I know the way interior designers work. I know you guys stay up all hours of the day and night. I also know that you spend way more time than any of your time billing invoices reflect, right? So I am aware of all that, which is why I'm so partial to collecting a retainer. I mean, anybody that I work with, I always make sure that we implement that process because you know that's our only recourse. That's the only money that we have. And sometimes we're even out way more than a retainer. Okay, I'm not gonna drill down and tell you what your retainers should be. But for me, um, depending on how large your uh, firm is, that, that's kind of usually where I place it or how big or large you anticipate this project to take or be. Now, after you've set up the new client, you've set up their time rates and things like that, it's time to post the client retainer that you collected uh, f during their client meeting. Okay, and you would do that from the home screen by going into accounting, money in. Money in is going to be where you post any funds received from pretty much anybody except for vendor deposits that are tied to an item on the project. Okay, those will not be processed or posted here. I will explain why um, as we go along, but for now, when you get to this money in screen, I want you to assume that there's only three things you can do. I, I know that there is a fourth, receive miscellaneous payment. You will hardly ever use that, okay? That's gonna be for things like, um, maybe you got a refund from your uh, workers comp or general liability insurance, that can go here. Um, you get a refund from, um, a duplicate payment for uh, an overhead type of expense, okay? And the other type of miscellaneous payment would be like a commission payment. If, if your vendors give you a commission check for the amount of business that you do, whether client specific or, or just for referrals, that would be something that you would post here. But otherwise, I'd like you to assume that you can only do three things here, okay? Now this receive miscellaneous payment, when in doubt, the reason why I don't like to teach it at least in the beginning is because it kind of confuses people on what can actually go to this account, okay? I mean, at the end, if you're a really strong accountant, you can almost post anything anywhere, right? But the reason why I specifically teach it in the manner that I do is because um, in the event that there's any mistakes or that I need to go back behind you and retrace your steps, I'm able to, okay? It takes a lot of time to kind of un undig or uncover mistakes or issues, and it takes um, less time to kind of just set it up correctly in the beginning, okay? So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and elaborate on the three things that I do want you doing in here, which would be the first one, receive client payment. This is what you are gonna select when you receive retainers or payments that don't tie out to a specific amount of anything that you see or if you don't know where to apply it to, okay? And that kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now because we don't have uh, items here yet, okay? so. At this, at this point, I'm gonna just teach you how to post the client payment, okay? We'll get into uh, the posting of other things as we move along in those, in those sections as well. So for now, I am gonna go ahead and collect the client retainer, okay? You'll see that I chose receive client payment. I selected the client. It does default to today's date. So if I wanted to change that, I could, um, I'm gonna, select that it was a check payment and put in that it was $2,500 or yeah, 
And then um, I will go ahead and put a check amount or a check number. And in this case, um, and in all cases, I do want you to notice or be mindful that no matter what you do, the bottom description will change. So you can see how it says receive and apply. I will ask that you leave the first few, like this much of, of um, the description all the time. And the reason why that's so is so that I can go in in the event that somebody makes a mistake or you get lost somehow in the process and I can retrace your steps to help you backtrack and correct whatever it was that you did. Okay, does that make sense? So in this case, I'm going back to receive client payment. And in this case, I do want to change it because I always like to make it known when it is a retainer. Okay. Um, you'll find that that often comes up towards the end of a project. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and post this $2,500 client retainer paid via check to our checking account. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click this blue button because it, it will not post until you do so. It does ask you to verify that you really want to do that. And I do, and you'll see that that posting pop-up comes up. And it, sometimes it disappears fairly quickly. Okay, 